Hi there. So a lot of people have been asking me how I make these videos. And this is of course relevant now that everyone's work from home and all the schools are converted into online schools. Uh, all of a sudden a lot of people have to make these online uh, education happen. And I think this style of video lends itself to online education. So I'll quickly go over the process of how to do this and maybe also how to run a university class online. All right, so the process is pretty simple of how I make my videos. This might not work for everyone, but it works for me. I use the Microsoft OneNote in order to um, scribble on papers, basically. So the thing is, um, in OneNote, you have this insert thing here, and you can print out a PDF onto your notebook here, right? So the way this looks then is you'll get the PDF in your notebook and you can scribble on it in with this using this draw um, tab here. You can choose a pen and scribble on it. You can highlight things and so on. And I do this while I record the screen. So that's pretty much all there's to it. You can then print out again this notebook and you can distribute those um, annotated PDF if you want. Uh, now, I'm pretty sure this is here inserted as some sort of uh, as a an image, so I don't know about the copy pasteability of the resulting product, but um, here you see this is a paper I actually made a video about, and that's basically all there's to it. It's it's OneNote. It's a free free program from Microsoft. Um, in order to do the annotating, I use a last or last last generation uh, Microsoft Surface tablet that I got for cheap at some point. Uh, it comes with a nice pen and touch screen, so you can basically zoom around and zip around while you do these things. In order to record the screen, um, I use this iSpring FreeCam software. Um, it might not be the best, but it does work for me well, and they have a cool Pro Edition if you need more features. But it works really well for recording your screen. You can record parts of your screen um, or the full screen. You can record with sound. Um, so I use a microphone and then I just record the sound from that with the same tool. And at the end you get a video file that you can upload to YouTube. Easy as that. If I need to do some editing, which is rarely because I am lazy, um, I use either iMovie from Apple, which comes with an Apple operating system. Um, so I have a, a MacBook that I run iMovie on. iMovie is really easy to edit movies on. I don't know if there's anything on Windows where it's that easy that comes pre-packaged, but if I need to do more complicated things, I use Shotcut, which is an open source um, editor. So, and and I, I believe that's available for all the platforms. And you can do fairly complicated things with Shotcut if you ever need to do that. But if I just need to stitch like two or three um, things together, I use iMovie. And that's pretty much it for making and recording uh, videos, I believe. Um, yeah, one note is that then in order to um, do a class uh, from from online. Um, not all people will just be able to record a video and then upload. Some of the thing, things you need to do actually live. And a lot of people right now use Zoom for live basically teleconferencing, but you can also do this sort of presenter mode where you present and people um, can do questions. Of course, you can do this via YouTube streaming as well, but then it's, of course, it's a kind of public on YouTube um, or link accessible with Zoom, I believe you have more um, control. But of course, Zoom is a proprietary solution and with the free account you can only get so far. So they limit your meetings in length if you have more than, I believe, three or four people. An alternative is Jitsi, uh, which is open source video conferencing. And the cool thing here is you can actually run your own server um, such that you can truly have control over everything. Uh, in order to communicate with lots of people, 
Um, of course, people use Slack, but again, Slack is a proprietary service, and an alternative to that would be Rocket Chat. Again, where you can run your own server, and it is fairly similar to Slack. Um, in order to collaborate or uh, share uh, just general notes, of course, Google's uh, suite of docs and sheets and so on is excellent. And for classes especially, Piazza is a good place. Uh, you can sign up as a class. You can have, uh, have TAs sign up as TAs. And you can have your students sign up as students and then the students can ask questions and then other students or the TAs can answer those questions. Basically a bit of a forum, but you can also announce things there for your classes. It's pretty cool and um, it's really geared towards online classes and it's free. So um, I know a lot of universities are using that right now. So if you're looking for some sort of... Um, announcement or discussion board for your class, uh, Piazza is definitely a good place to be. And lastly, we sometimes have classes where students have to submit projects and we we actually use CMT for this um, because it's it's really neat where you can you know set deadlines and everything students can upload and then you can assign reviewers to those projects which in our case are us, the TAs, and you know, you can have meta reviews and so on. Um, so CMT is actually very good, um, maybe a bit of an overkill if you just run a single class, but um, it has lots and lots of features. And of course the, the big conferences also use CMT, so it's definitely stress tested. All right, so that was it from for my videos. Um, or at least how I make them. I just, you know, print out the PDF, sit down for half an hour and rant about it. And that's pretty much it. And then you throw it on YouTube or distribute the file however you want. And with that, I hope I answered a little bit of these questions. And, um, yep, I all wish you a healthy rest of the corona season. Bye.